Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Glad to have you back with us again. Uh, today we have uh, Bill Jordan with us again. And today we do. We do. The man, he's here today. <laughs> hey, Bill, how are you? I'm doing great, guys. Hope you are. Thanks for having me back. Oh, it's great. It's nice to have you back. Oh, no, that's not what he meant. Okay, well, anyway. Do we hey, ever have know, it? Do we ever have his back? Do we have his? That's exactly right. <laughs> by I'm the great. way, by the way, speaking of having your back, which is meaningless to me, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I noticed that we all have our, what I call Hawaiian shirts on. Uh, and Art, uh, you look like you're in the middle of Hawaii. I don't know what's behind you, the beach well, or something. That's Laguna Beach. Laguna Beach. Well, okay, it ain't Hawaii, but it'll have to do. Mm -hmm. Bill, is, is, is there is a, a a certain a certain age that you get to, men, and I think you have to grow facial hair. It's like the uniform. We have uniforms, don't we? It's like like I woke up this morning and I had to put on the uniform for old guys. What do you mean growing facial hair? What do you mean? Oh, well, oh, that. I, I've let mine just go. I call them, this right now is my Wuhan whiskers. Oh, and I did I have, now, now Art schooled me. This is a door knocker. I was calling it a Van Dyke initially. And I had it for years, just this. Yeah. And then it got kind of wimpy. And then I just zapped it off here a couple of months ago. But uh, kind of recently, I've just kind of let it go. And then I'll buzz it back and I'll let it go and I'll buzz it back. And here soon for summer, I'm going to cut everything the same length, which would be really, really short. Just get the whole thing, you know. Uh, comb your hair with a wash rag kind of thing. And uh, that's what I'll be doing. But as far as the the uh, uniform, I think like the Hawaiian or the print shirts, I may have started that for me. I've been doing that for maybe 15 years, maybe when I was around 50. I just, it, they started selling them. I kind of liked them. I didn't get any of the wild looking, well, maybe one or two of the wilder looking sort of Hawaiian or print shirts. They're just comfy. Typically they're for... Uh, it's good. You don't have to tuck them in. They're yep. designed to not tuck in. And so I'm they're for, for the for older, them. overweight, uh, older, overweight guy. It's uh, you know, it's what we do. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right. That's the, well, you don't have to tuck it in. Well, you know, you know something though that there is um, an ugly side to what John was referring to. And to me, when I hear a uniform of old guys, is I think of not so much this shirt, although. It could be a uh, Aloha shirt or what did you call them, uh, Bill? Camp, camp shirts. Camp shirts. Camp shirts. Yep. Uh, that um, to me, I saw somebody <clears throat> walking around maybe with not a lot of spring in their step, but there was always something very common. Longer shorts than I would have ever worn in my life, uh, down to about the knees, and knee socks with sneakers or whatever shoes they had as opposed to no socks which is my normal summer garb and yeah. uh, or or maybe uh, a workout uh, you know like a uh, a tennis sock or something like that so to yeah. me that's a uniform that i don't find very attractive Correct. that's my mind's view maybe yeah, there's the other uniform too of the socks with sandals yeah, or the, yeah, the older true. guy on the beach with his metal detector with his Bermuda shorts, <laughs> his knee yeah. dress socks and dress shoes yes. on the beach with his metal detector. Right. Black, I don't think that happened. Yeah, black socks on sandals. Yeah. That was Here's the other thing, too, when you mentioned about uniform, guys dig that. If we show up at a function or a party or a get together and two guys are we're wearing the same shirt or whatever, we're like, hey, we're where you got the memo. If women do that, oh my gosh, there's a meltdown. They're yeah. wearing the same thing. Can you believe she's wearing? They're wearing the same clothes. And if you compliment a woman on her dress, you'll never see her wear that dress again. You tell me you like the shirt. You tell me you like that shirt. I'll never take it off. There's a difference. Uh, yeah, your wife has been. Yelling at you for not taking it off too. I... Also, you don't you don't compliment your wife on her beard either, right? Uh, hey, that, hey that's now. not you don't want to go there. Hey now, don't, don't do that. Yeah, it is. It, that's really true. I think we we tend to enjoy 
the what is it the um, uh, responsibility of having to figure out what to wear. Throw on another Hawaiian shirt today. <laughs> Yeah, which, one, which one am I going to wear? The other thing that gets a, gets a beating is uh, is cargo shorts and cargo pants. Yeah, you can Google, you know, why you should never wear. I don't care what the lists say. What, that's the other beauty of being a little older. We don't care. I need a place for my stuff. The phones are getting bigger. We got wallets that are this big, and you throw your hip out of joint. You need a chiropractor after you go to a someplace where you're sitting there on your wallet for a few hours. Um, we need a place for our stuff. So I need, I love my cargo shorts and cargo pants. Another part of a uniform. Yeah, and T-shirts. T-shirt. Now, this is uh, only because you were wearing a flowered shirt today. This is my first day of the year uh, wearing my Hawaiian shirts. I've got a dozen of them or more. But up until that time, up until today, I was wearing T-shirts all winter. Now, granted, I'm in Southern California, so you can get away with a T-shirt. But T-shirts were another uni – they are another uniform for old guys. Uh, T-shirts, and in fall and winter here in North Carolina, I've – for some reason, the last couple of years, I've gotten a – developed a thing for long-sleeve T-shirts. So, yeah, I'm all about that. I was wearing a T-shirt before we did this, you know, this uh, broadcast extravaganza. And, you know, quite honestly, John, I've never been told by anybody that I've impacted their apparel. The thought that you would go and change because I was wearing one, I just I just commented a sort of Hawaiian look. This is not the Magnum P.I., but the Magnum P.U. look that, uh, that my wife calls it. Well, Bill, you know, I don't know that you were ever in a position to... Uh, be a trendsetter on fashion because you were in radio, weren't you? That's what I always <laughs> told people. It's like, who cares? I'm. Why? Why are you worried about this? We're on the radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so also, right, uh, I also speaking about uniforms. Uh, the other thing that um, uh, up until recently uh, is they people would start wearing hats. I never wore a hat up until I had. Uh, got diagnosed with a, uh, a melanoma that I had removed from my uh, top of my head. And then I have to wear a hat all the time. So I have like about 13 hats, one from the Survivor Series, one from uh, my Marine Corps hats. I have uh, a hat from uh, the Brick People, a documentary we did once. I have uh, Western Exterminator. I told them that when they fumigated the house that they had to give me a hat. Otherwise, I wasn't going to hire them. I'd hire somebody else. So I have all these great hats. Uh, so I, well, I, I guess from that standpoint, I'm a, a I'm an old guy with a hat. I, I I've worn and I call them caps. If you're talking about like a baseball yeah, style caps, cap. yeah. Uh, people, I, I have a friend that I have a major debate with all the time about is it a hat or is it a cap? But uh, I've got tons of ball caps. I've probably got twenty some, thirty some here in a closet that's three steps from me. And but just like with our t-shirts, I may have forty seven t-shirts and I wear three. I may have 57 ball caps and I wear maybe five. I rotate the same ones around. I've got my favorites, you know. Sure. Well, there's certain things about uh, uh, what they call logo wear, right? If you've got the t a T-shirt with a very cool logo or, you know, whether it's Led Zeppelin or maybe a product. Um, we did years and years ago, we did a... Uh, a series of demolition derbies, and they were at night. They were for live live television, two-hour broadcast, live every Friday night. And we hired a Musco Lights. And Musco Lights, these are the guys who put up those, you know, 7,000-foot-tall uh, pillars in the stadiums <laughs> with lights as large as you are aiming down on on the field. And they'd come in with a truck that would lift these things up in the air and turn them on and light the, the, the racetrack. It was amazing. I got a free T-shirt. My Musco T-shirt, my Musco light T-shirt is frayed on every edge. Perfect. And I love it. And if, <laughs> if everybody, anybody should ever t throw that out, it's the end of the world. But here's the other thing. And my dad told me this years ago. He said, why would I pay someone to advertise for them? Oh, well, you know, I get it that people will give me a T-shirt, but you go to someplace, you go to Disney and you spend $50 for a T-shirt to advertise Disney for them. You're paying them to let you advertise for them. Sure. I and I've all, it's crazy, though. I've had that same problem with Ralph Lauren and Polo. Yeah. But the Musco T-shirt was free. 
<laughs> it was a badge. <laughs> it was a badge of honor. It was a production uh, 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 memento. Sure. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, there's a, out here on the West Coast every year, there's a, uh, a professional uh, show, um, a trade show called Cinegear. And uh, I would never go to Cinegear without getting my uh, uh, cup of the year, like, uh, of course, this is my only cup of uh, uh, choice right now, but uh, Warner Brothers would give out cups, but people would give out hats, and you'd want to have the one that said Yellow Jacket or the other pro production uh, supplies company. So I have a whole yeah. bunch of those in the garage as well. And every so often I'll go out and just to change it up, I'll, I'll wear one of those. Uh, so, sure, but, sure. but Bill, you're a shorts guy. Uh, you were doing a whole series of short on shorts on your Facebook page and uh, talking about being really um, disturbed that people would be concerned that your shorts were being torn up. It's not particularly a, a senior kind of thing, but you were very disturbed because the, your private parts weren't showing through yet. <laughs> and they were yeah. otherwise perfectly yeah. serviceable. So why don't you talk about, you are a fashionista in that. Tell us about your your fetish with shorts. Well, I don't think I have a fetish about it, but I will tell you this. I did post on Facebook not long ago that my shorts were kind of ripped, and I wear them for yard work now. They're a pair of Eddie Bauer shorts that were, when Eddie Bauer had a brick-and-mortar store in one of our local malls, and this was, I knew, years ago, right? And so I posted this picture. It's like, you know, they're just broken in, and I don't want to get them, you know, fixed or sewed or anything. So I was going through some pictures, and I happened upon a picture of when our daughter was maybe seven or eight years old, and I'm looking at the picture, and I was wearing the same shorts that I just posted like two weeks ago. This is from the late 80s, early 90s. Same shorts. I did, but I've worn them that long and they've made it through everything. And again, I was doing yard work. I did finally throw them away. It's like, oh. I can't justify it. Anymore. Well, you know, the problem was they were so torn at the leg, I was sticking my foot through the tear <laughs> instead of the pant leg. Hole. And they're not, well, Bill, too, they're not too comfy like that. Bill, the, the mistake you made uh, was not valuing them for every uh, the meaning behind them, those years of service. I, you I should have, quite quite frankly, you should have framed them. How long, well, ago, I, how long ago did you throw them out? I, I had a little service for them here in the backyard before I disposed of them. How long ago, how long ago was that? Uh, two weeks, a week. Yeah, you know what? Why don't you go uh, check the trash? Can't. They may still be there. It may not be too late. My condolences. My condolences. I'm telling hey. you, it was a sad day. All right, listen, guys, uh, with that note, yes. on a sad <laughs> note, well, actually, we've covered everything it. from our feet to our head. There's nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, today's uniform being Hawaiian shirts, everybody looks great. So thank you. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Bill, uh, I'm raising my cup to you uh, because I'm embracing the boom. Oh. And uh, all of us, how did that happen? Where could somebody get this fine cup if they were so interested? Well, let me, just a quick background on this. Embrace the Boom references folks who were born between 1946 and 1964, and they're technically and accurately known as the baby boomer generation. And so I started this little movement to embrace the boom, to uh, look at all the positives that we've got going on. Like, you know, we can wear what we want to wear and not care about what people think. I mean, that's a benefit. If you don't think that's a benefit, that's a benefit. Um, but you can go to Bill Jordan, uh, J-O-R-D-A-N, Bill Jordan, embrace the boom.com. There are direct links to, a, I did a 15 part video series about some life tips that have, when I practice them, help me to live a better and more fulfilling and calmer life. And also you can uh, order one of the, or more of those mugs, free shipping with an order of three or more. Um, and they're 15 ounces. They're pretty sturdy. It's printed on both sides as I've showed you guys, as you know. And um, anyway, it just anchors my day in the, in, the, in the mindset of being very positive about where I am in my life and to embrace the boom. Thanks for letting me plug that. Uh, oh, that was a plug? The, Wait, then we need to, uh, let me get the invoice. I didn't, I didn't realize it was a plug. I thought it was uh, life information. 
<laughs> well, that's what it was. Okay. Speaking of ugly plugs, uh, John, where can people see things about us? Well, I'm glad you asked, Art. I think you should go to celebratingact2.com and youtube.com slash celebratingact2. Be there and enjoy the view. And, and subscribe. And yeah. subscribe and wear your uniform. Right. So I think it's time for us to um, say goodbye, everybody. Thank you, Bill. Aloha, Bill. everybody. Aloha. Oh, yeah. Aloha. Aloha. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.